Following this edition of Southern Newsweek, student loan debt tops the $15 billion mark and prompts calls for changes to the national loan scheme. Back for round three, the city's mayor announces he'll run again, but this time he'll do it independently. And cycle safety among children is revealed to be lacking, so parents are being encouraged to step up. Kia ora, I'm Holly Buchanan. New Zealand's collective student debt has recently reached a record $15 billion. Tertiary groups around the country have been addressing that by rallying for changes to the loan scheme. But local representatives are keeping quiet. Walking around with a weight on their shoulders, New Zealand's combined student loan debt has today reached $15 billion. It's a substantial figure, but for some locals, it's just part of their tertiary experience. I'm kind of just pushing it to the side for now and then think I'll just have to deal with it after uni, I guess. If you want your country to go further, you're going to have to have more professionals and professional jobs. And without universities that's pumping money into it, then you're not going to get that. And I guess it's just as a result. And if you're going to have something else, you're going to have other problems. So, yeah. The New Zealand Union of Students Associations reached out to all its member groups to organise simultaneous activities related to the debt. President Lindsay Higgins told 39 Dunedin News she contacted the Otago University Students Association but was told they didn't have the capacity to hold an event. That's despite the debt being of concern to many Scarfies. I'm always so gutted I'm stuck in debt though. But, um, yeah, it's always on your back. Because you want to go travelling, but like you want to earn money and it's never going to really help because you can't actually do anything that's going to get you far. Like starting pays are too low for the debt that we're in. It makes it really hard to maybe pursue what you want to pursue um, because you're really concerned with paying off these debts um, and it really limits kind of what you're able to do after school. Today's marking of the debt is largely symbolic because the total fluctuates as new loans are taken out and others are paid off but it's giving those concerned an opportunity to offer up solutions to what they see as a major problem. Maybe the government could help with subsidising education a bit more, but, you know, it's, it's a difficult problem. Having education around career options and um, making sure that people are, are getting engaged into what they're studying so they're invested in it and not just um, considering it as the next step of study. The Otago University Students Association denied requests for on-camera comment today. A statement was issued to 39 Dunedin News that executives weren't entering the discussion. Ruby McAndrew, 39 Dunedin News. Investigations are underway after a burning couch set a student flat alight in North Dunedin. Emergency services have been responding to incidents associated with the University of Otago's annual orientation. But campus authorities say despite a few problems, the week of festivities ran more smoothly than it has in the past. The ruins of antics in the student quarter. Things are simmering down in North Dunedin as orientation week has come to a close. The University of Otago's campus watch team is relatively satisfied with the behaviour during the week-long event, despite a few incidents. Generally, uh, I think the student behaviour has been um, pretty much as expected. And um, we're rather happy with the way the, uh, the um, last week's gone, although there's been some major incidences that which we're not too happy about. The celebration marks the beginning of the academic year for tertiary students and also attracts visitors from out of town. A number of couches were stolen and set alight during the week, with one of those catching fire to a nearby flat as occupants were sleeping inside. The campus watch team is helping police and the fire service investigate the blaze to find a culprit. I think this is, it's a f new level of stupidity really. I think whoever lit that fire is playing Russian roulette with other people's lives. Um, we've been very lucky that there hasn't been a fatality. More than 15 people were arrested during orientation, but the majority weren't university students. They'll be appearing in court on charges including assault and dealing in Class B drugs. The goal for Campus Watch is to make sure Scarfies are focusing on their work and staying out of trouble. Well I'm certainly hoping the students will realise that they are here to study after all and, um, and they'll knuckle down and, and, and get to, um, you know, get busy with their degrees. Campus Watch is noticing a drop in the number of couch fires year on year, but the latest incidents are prompting staff to crack down on the student tradition. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. 
Candidates are starting to emerge for this year's local body elections being held in October. Mayor Dave Cull has announced he'll stand for another term, which would be his third. But he's moving away from the group that helped him gain power previously. Working on another three years in office, Mayor Dave Cull is planning to stand for the role once again. If he's elected, it'll be his third term in charge and he's got ideas about how to best serve the community going forward. The big challenges we've got in our community are population balance, um, attracting more people here, more businesses and more jobs, and the other is around climate change and some of those things, that, that's a big challenge. There will no longer be a Greater Dunedin campaign group, which was successfully led by the Mayor and involved other councillors. Instead, candidates are planning to run independently. Well, we go back to 2007 when we started and then the subsequent elections, and our ambition was to get new and better people onto council, there was a real gap, uh, and to get some more transparency, some fiscal responsibility and some future focus into council thinking. Now we succeeded in both counts, we got some really good people into council. The local body elections are held every three years on the second Saturday in October. This year's voting will take place on the 8th, when residents will be asked to support their preferred representatives. The Labour Party is planning to push several members into City Hall and existing councillor David Benson-Pope might join that bandwagon. Mayor Cull says there needn't be concerns over political influence within the council chamber. The important thing is what people base, what councillors base their decision making and their voting on. And if it's on the evidence in front of them, from the staff or wherever else, and their own values and, what's, and the, you know, the considerations of the local community, that's fine. Kate Wilson's the only councillor at present to confirm she's not seeking re-election, but Andrew Noon says he's unlikely to stand again. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. The gap between disabled and able-bodied people is closing thanks to new technology. Some of the most innovative and simplest mobility assistance devices have been showcased at an expo in the city, and they included a few local inventions. Giving locals a leg up, these inventions to help with mobility are among dozens being showcased at a touring disability expo. It's been a roadshow that's gone to five main centres in New Zealand and we've got between around about 50 suppliers in each venue. So today we're here in Dunedin for uh, the day and really it's to show people what options are available for disabled and older people. The show featured some of the most state-of-the-art technology available locally and from around the world. This seated Segway was manufactured in New Zealand and is among the finest of its kind in the world. But not everything was high on price as organisers wanted to expose even the most simplest innovations accessible to everyone. We've got from the very high tech uh, things like uh, adapted Segways um, to um, quite low tech kind of stuff which doesn't require being plugged in but uh, the very simplest ideas can make a huge difference to a person's life. The Expo's all about giving people with disabilities a chance to see devices personally and get a feel for new technology. Organisers say this collection of goods is making everyday living easier for people with bodily impairments and that's eliminating differences within the general population. Certainly it's getting a, a, a little step closer every time, uh, there's still quite a big gap um, but certainly once you're looking at some of the computer technology or ways to adapt uh, things like iPads to get them to do stuff for people, that, that's, that's happening quite a lot now. This was the last league in the week-long disability roadshow, exposing people in the deep south to the latest and greatest life-enhancing gadgets available. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. A local medical student has found many primary age children lack the ability to cycle safely. She studied almost 300 kids examining their riding skills and equipment. And she says parents need to be more involved in decision making. Looking over some stark findings, this University of Otago student is reading through a study she's completed on children's cycle safety. She examined youth under the age of 10 to see if they were competent enough to tackle roads later in life. Why I did the study was basically to look at whether or not there were certain factors in primary school aged children cycling that would affect their ability to cycle by themselves later. Brommel worked with 293 primary school pupils aged 8 to 12 from the Alexandra area. 
They were tested on their knowledge of road rules, their competency riding bikes and the quality of their cycling gear. Bromwell says the results show more training and checks need to be done to ensure kids can ride alone on roads. We found that one in four of ten year old children and below weren't able to completely do the practical assessment which involved kids biking up and down a cycle lane and performing the hand signals and being able to start and stop without going outside the lines or losing control. Police in the New Zealand Transport Agency recommend that children under 10 should ride with an adult. Bromwell wanted to test if kids just over that age were competent without supervision. She says the highest rate of cycle deaths and accidents are within the 10 to 14 age group and parents need to think carefully about letting children bike alone. A recommendation from that would be for parents not to assume that just because it's said that children who are 10 and above essentially could cycle by themselves, that this is necessarily the case. Parents should probably try and address for themselves and assess whether or not their children are in fact able to cycle by themselves competently on the road. She says it's great the government's investing in more cycleways, but thinks safety needs to be addressed further. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on Southern Newsweek, changes coming for Emerson's Brewery and the city as its new multi-million dollar complex nears completion. And research into heart disease is set to get a boost thanks to an indoor cycling challenge and some star appeal. Welcome back. A new brewery being built in Anzac Ave is set to add dozens of jobs and thousands of dollars to the local economy. The multi-million dollar Emerson's complex is edging towards the final stage of construction ahead of a winter opening. And there are some special features in store. Looking over expansion plans, Emerson Brewery staff are preparing to shift into their much larger site currently under construction. They're having to increase production and capacity as a result of growing success. We'll be producing lots of different beers, as well as our core beers, but we are trying to keep up with the demand. All operations will soon be moving from the company's lease Wycliffe Street site to a bigger property at the intersection of Anzac Ave and Frederick Street. Staff need a larger facility to grow production and parent company Lion has invested about $30 million into the project. The upgrade is giving staff opportunities to experiment with new brews and an expanded bottling plant will boost output to the rest of the country. We will have a 1200 litre brewery which means that we can keep doing small scale brewing and production and trying out new different beers and should they become popular they'll go up to the 5000 litre brew house. A restaurant has also been developed to operate alongside the brewery. That'll create more hospitality jobs within the city and new positions are also being created for the production side of the business. Staff are pleased to be staying in the company's founding city and giving the local community a boost. It's got to be positive and not to, to know that we've actually stayed in Denison because this isn't part of the brand and the brand is about Denison. The last beer has been made at the old premises this month and staff are looking forward to officially opening their new brewery in July. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. A local tertiary student is finally getting to celebrate her fifth birthday despite being born in 1996. The official anniversary of her leap day birth is only included in the calendar every four years. And she's not the only one in her family beating the odds. Hitting a milestone. As this university student starts her first day of the academic year, she's also celebrating her fifth birthday. Well, today is the 29th of February, which is Leap Day. So I'm turning 20 today, which also means I'm turning five. Originally from Gore, Cormac is studying to become a teacher at the University of Otago. Despite only having had five birthdays in her lifetime, she is legally considered to be 20 years old. Although it's a day that comes around once every four years, leap day births are not uncommon in her family. Well, it's quite cool, especially for our family, because my great-grandmother was also born on leap day too. So it is quite special for all the family. 
The RN estimated 3,200 Kiwis with Leap Day births. The odds of being born on February 29 are about 1 in 1,400. Cormac usually celebrates her birthday on the 28th of February to keep it within the right month. She says being born on such a rare day hasn't caused too many issues for her, with the most notable confusion early on. The only problem we really had was when I was starting school, because when you turn five it obviously isn't a leap year, so the teachers were a bit confused when I should start school, but I did start on the 28th, so I started as a four-year-old. In the weekend she celebrated her 20th year with friends playing five-year-old based games. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. An indoor cycling challenge is helping to support the local branch of a charity in the final days of its annual appeal. Dozens of people, including a few sports stars, have been taking part in the active event put on by physiology staff at the University of Otago. And their hard work could boost research into heart disease. Off the field and onto a bike. Several Highlanders have been enlisted by University of Otago physiology staff to take part in a cycling challenge in aid of the Heart Foundation. It's a big undertaking for organisers, but they're happy with the large turnout. This is our first ever time, so it's a bit scary, but hopefully it goes really well. We've had really good response from the university and from our businesses as well. The event is raising money for the local branch of the Heart Foundation as part of the organisation's annual appeal month. It's a gesture that staff say makes a world of difference for the work the foundation does. Nationally the Heart Foundation funds research and I think over the last 20 years we funded about $55 million worth and the Otago University Physiology Department have a lot of great heart research happening here and they wanted to give something back to our annual appeal and so they've organised this event for us. The teams involved were required to bike for 10 minutes at a time with the entire pursuit lasting three hours. It was a kind of coast-to-coast -coast challenge designed to mimic the distance between Dunedin and Haast. While it's proved to be no mean feat, organisers say the Heart Foundation's a worthy cause. They've been really good to the Department of Physiology over the years in terms of project funding. Um, we have a lot of academics doing research into heart disease, so they just seem the logical choice. The fundraiser will go full circle, with some of the money raised expected to be used for further heart research at the university. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. And just ahead on Southern Newsweek, some stereotypes could be on thin ground as a weekend competition proves women are just as strong as men. And tea and photography proved to be a winning blend and earn a Dunedin woman top honours in a national competition. Welcome back. Female athletes from around the region are proving they're just as strong as their male counterparts. More than a dozen women demonstrated their mettle for an inaugural strength competition held in Dunedin. And organisers are hoping to break down some stereotypes. Pushing through the pain. Female athletes from near and far have been working their bodies to the limit for the first ever Southern Strong Women competition. There were four events involved and none of the ladies were taking it easy. The events for today um, started off with a one, one rep max axle bar deadlift um, and they moved on to a dead ball medley ranging um, weights ranging from 20 through to 75 kgs um, and they had to lift that to a 1.1 metre high platform. Fifteen women from throughout the Lower South Island were taking part in the inaugural contest. With many of the competitors travelling solely for the event, organisers say it proves how popular muscle-based disciplines are becoming. The strength training scene is definitely growing, especially in the in the women's sector. Um, and there's a lot more, a lot more females who are not are not so afraid to get in and actually and actually um, train strength. Um, a lot of those stereotypes are slowly being broken down, which is which is great to see because there's lots of good health benefits, um, especially for females in strength training. One of the events involved the competitors walking 40 metres while carrying 100 kilograms of weight. While these women were making it look easy, Spencer says aesthetics mean nothing. It's all about showcasing power. It's not about how you look, it's how you perform. Um, and that's really, that's really important and, and this is what we're trying to break down. That stereotype that you know, women shouldn't lift weights is, we feel is a negative one. Um, we're trying to pre promote strength training for, for women in a more positive light. A sizeable audience watched the strong women do their thing and organisers are hoping more females are inspired to give it a go themselves. It's likely they'll get that chance with plans already underway to stage similar events in the future. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. 
A local fashion designer is preparing her first couture collection for the railway station catwalk. She's been through the city's prestigious design school and is hoping exposure from the show leads to more sales within a tough industry. And she's giving old fabric a modern twist in the process. Stitching up strips of old jeans. Local fashion designer Melanie Child is finishing her five-piece women's wear collection for the ID Dunedin Fashion Show. What I've chosen to show is a collection of sort of bespoke um, couture pieces that are entirely constructed out of denim and I'm using a lot of traditional hand techniques that you don't necessarily see in clothing today. Child's been a part of the city's style set for years, but it'll be her first time showing on the railway station runway. It's all glitz and glamour on the night, but behind the scenes it's a lot of hard work. Because there's so much labour involved in what I make, usually I don't get, like the, the amount of time that I put into what I make doesn't necessarily reflect in the price, so for me it's definitely, to be cheesy, a labour of love. Child's holding down a full-time job while building her clothing label. She says Dunedin's very accommodating of the arts and budding designers can find the local scene nurturing. But it's a tough business, especially for small-scale ethical designers using recycled fabrics and zero-waste techniques. The industry is changing and as much as people are starting to become more conscious of what they're buying, um, people don't necessarily have a lot of money. so. It takes effort for people to want to shop, you know, for independent local designers and shop also ethically. Despite getting calluses from hours of hand stitching, Child remains passionate about her craft. She's hoping ID gives her a commercial boost. Just having my work displayed alongside some of Dunedin and New Zealand's most established label is huge exposure. ID attracts thousands of people to Dunedin each year, giving local designers a commercial platform to show their wares. This will be the 17th event, with activities beginning on the 11th of March and running for just over a week. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. And finally, a Dunedin woman's love of tea and photography has seen her take out top honours in a national competition. The win has surprised the aspiring photographer, who's a first-time entrant, and her shot almost didn't make the cut. Reviewing an award-winning photograph, Edith Lee's celebrating having beaten out 15 other finalists in a national competition organised by Canon and Del Mar T. Her picture wasn't a spur-of-the-moment thing, with detailed planning going into the stellar shot. I had this idea in my head that I wanted to take a photo of my daughter having a, a tea party with her, her soft toy animals and I was actually staying down in Manipuri with my mum and I'd been out a few days before because I knew I wanted to take it in long grass. To get the ideal photo Lee, her mother and five year old Anika got up at 6.30 in the morning to catch the best light. She ended up entering six photos into the competition but the winning one was a last minute inclusion. Obviously I had quite a few from that shoot and I'd picked out what I thought was the best one and I thought oh, I can't really enter two that are kind of looking the same and then at the last minute I thought oh, oh okay I'll just, I might as well just enter it and yeah I'm so glad I did. <laughs> Lee's blown away with her winnings which include $5,000 worth of Canon camera gear and a 10 day all expenses paid trip to Sri Lanka. She's travelled extensively, spending five years overseas, but is excited about going somewhere new. I've never been there before, but um, friends that have been there tell me it's great. And I just can't wait to go, to be there drinking tea and taking photos Absolutely. with all the new gear that I can buy with my prize. <laughs> Lee's just begun to pursue photography professionally with several family shoots and a wedding under her belt. She's looking forward to expanding her repertoire in coming months and using her new gear to gain a better focus. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. And that's all for this edition of Southern Newsweek. Remember to check us out on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter or take a look at our website at dunedintv.co.nz. I'm Holly Buchanan, thanks for watching.
supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.